Hey, what's going on? It's Joey Myers from the Hitting Performance Lab. And in this Anthony Rendon swing analysis, we're going to go over a couple things. We're going to talk about the hip slide as a stride technique shifting foot pressure and getting shorter and staying shorter. First off, I wanted to show a pitcher's view and talk about how really insignificant the turning in of the pelvis is. I have Javier Baez over here on the right. I've done a swing analysis on him where we talked about this and then Anthony Rendon over here on the left. And you can see the difference in how much that they turn their pelvis in or don't turn their pelvis in. And my argument is that we really don't need to do that. We keep, we talk about putting the hips on a skewer where the skewer goes through the hips towards a pitcher and that the hips slide on that skewer. And the only time they can come off the skewer is during the actual turn itself as the pelvis starts to open. But we don't want to see it come off the skewer, turn into the skewer before that, which we see Baez doing over here. You can see both butt cheeks pretty much from there, which you really only see one butt cheek over here with Anthony Rendon. So I wanted to start this off and show you this view and just take my word for it. There's many swings here of Anthony Rendon. He's doing the same thing on all of them. It's not just because this pitch is inside. Now, one thing I wanted to highlight in this video is the hip slide as a stride technique. And what you'll see here is Anthony Rendon really doesn't have much of a stride. You can argue here that maybe he's got a little bit of a toe tap where he kind of sets the foot out there. He's got his weight at about a 60-40 type of position. And then what you're going to see is he's going to hip slide on that skewer forward. And then he's going to start his turn. Interesting stride type and I have some hitters that do this and that choose to do this especially with two strikes or when they're facing somebody a pitcher that's got above average velocity and that is okay the stride in our system is not meant for power and the stride I argue for any system any hitting system doesn't really contribute much power to the swing you might get a half a mile per hour ball exit speed with a longer stride versus no stride but a stride's main purpose is timing. So if my hitters are getting on time more often or they're comfortable with their timing and their stride, then we don't touch anything. However, if they're having a hard time with their timing and they have a high leg kick, then we may experiment with the toe tap or we may experiment with this hip slide style. One thing I want you to check out in this hip slide is the shifting foot pressure. No matter what the hitter is using as a stride type, whether it's a leg kick, medium or high, if it's a toe tap, it's a hip slide, it's a slide step, doesn't really matter. You're going to see them use shifting foot pressure. So what we should see is we should see in the beginning, before the turn happens, before the hitter starts turning, we should see foot pressure on the outside part of the back foot and the inside part of the front foot up until the start of the turn. So as you can see here, this is the start of the turn here. He's starting to load and take slack out of his system. And then you're going to see that shifting foot pressure go to the opposite side of what it started with. So you're seeing that the outside here is going to shift to the inside of the back foot and it's going to shift from the inside of the front foot to the outside of the front foot. Oftentimes you see hitters, some hitters more than others, where you can see the bottom of their front foot because they're on the outside or on the fifth metatarsal of the foot, the, the pinky, pinky bone into the foot. You see the bottom of their their foot as they do it. Now this isn't a teach. I don't we don't talk about doing more or less than that. Typically, you see if the ball is closer to the hitter, you'll see more of the bottom of the foot. There'll be more on the outside part of the front foot. And if the ball is more away, you'll see the foot a little bit more flat. Now, Anthony Rendon here in the swing analysis, you can see that he stays pretty pretty stable, pretty grounded with his, the sole of his foot, although it can be argued that he is definitely on the outside part of his foot, but more of the bottom than other, other players are than on the side. So this is the idea of a hip slide. It's okay for hitters to use especially if it's high velocity pit they're facing high velocity pitching or maybe a two two strike approach but the objective of this if you're going to use a hip slide minimal stride minimal feet off the ground the objective is to get on timing more often it isn't about power or taking away power or anything like that it's a timing mechanism now i'm going to show you a couple of anthony rendon swings in the swing swing analysis exemplifying him getting shorter and staying shorter or getting low and staying low the benefits to this are when the hitter 
gets taller. Some coaches teach hitter, their hitters to get tall or stand tall or stay tall or whatever. What tends to happen is, is it pulls the hitter up on the plane of the pitch. They tend to hit the ball on the ground more. If they are a little bit more mindful of about their batted ball outcomes and they are hitting more ground balls as they're swinging, getting taller, what they'll end up doing is they'll compensate by using their hands more to get under the ball. We don't want to do that. We want to let the hands just swing. We want the body to get the barrel on the plane of the pitch. So what you're going to see here at the start of the swing, even with the hip slide, you're going to see him drop below that bottom line at the start of his swing. This is a typical at stride landing position. So if a hitter wasn't using this hip slide, they were using a slide step or leg kick or whatever, you would see the best hitters drop below the starting line, or maybe if they're more crouched like a Victor Martinez was, he'll stay, he'll start at this, this bottom line and he'll stay under this, this line down here. So you're gonna see, he's gonna maintain, doesn't really pick this back foot off the ground, he just kind of goes to the toe, shifts his weight against a braced front side, which is A-OK, -okay. this is as long as there's a shift going on there of the center mass that the, we're not squishing the bug and turning the back foot like you're squishing a bug or putting out a cigarette butt. But you're gonna see him stay below this line. So he's gonna get, get short, he's gonna stay short, and he's using his knee action He's using the distance between his feet to do this. Players that tend to skip too much, they skip their foot six inches, will end up taller above this line. And as they're swinging, they're getting taller. So it is messing with vision and tracking. It is messing with them getting on the plane. He even actually gets lower during his turn itself. So you see him getting lower and staying lower. Here's another bat. You can actually see it from the beginning. You can see this hip slide or toe tap, semi toe tap going on. But you can see the getting shorter, staying shorter principle where he's starting at his head below the tire, the, setting the top line. Then you're going to see him set that foot out there. And he is going to, we're going to talk about it in a minute, he's going to sit into this back hip or his back hip pocket. Then you're going to see him as he's hip sliding before his turn happens you see him sink below the bottom line and he's going to stay short or stay under that bottom line now we talked about the neutral position that his pelvis his hips start in versus javier baez earlier in this video you can see that here and then what he's going to do as he gets that front foot out there is he's going to sit and sink couple things we work with hitters. Sometimes our hitters will, as they stride, will straighten this back leg and will make them taller, obviously. So wherever they start, they'll end up above the line. But what we do is there is something in there that that hitter is trying to take slack out of the system, trying to create and hunt and seek out stability to be able to move from as they move into their turn. And they will straighten this leg out, which there is stability in straightening the knee out. And also possibly going into kind of a hip extension where you come out of a hip hinge or a, an athletic position. And we want to promote or encourage our hitters to be in more of an athletic position, which you see Anthony Rendon here in the swing analysis. You can see that's what he's doing. So one thing we do or a couple things we do is we take this back toe. We instead of it pointing straight at the plate or perpendicular to the plate, we turn the back toe in slightly, which now gives the hitter a little bit of hip, hip torque in the back hip. The second thing that we do is, as you're seeing Anthony Rendon do here, is you're seeing him sit or sink into this back hip or back hip pocket. He's just kind of like there's a harness going over the back butt cheek so for righty the right butt cheek for lefty the left butt cheek maybe they might feel that they're pinching their back groin a little bit but they should feel like their bone in their butt is peeking out of that back butt cheek they're sitting into that harness back there and it's not a rotating inward of the hip we saw that at the beginning of this video comparing it to javier baez we saw anthony rendon not inward turn his hips he sat into his back hip pocket. That's more like what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep the hips on the skewer. So you see him sit, he goes from this kind of neutral position and then you see him take that stride and you see him sit into this back hip, which creates an environment of taking slack out of the system. 
you turn that back toe in, creates back hip torque, and now we sit into that back hip pocket, and now we're all ready to go with the pelvis. Again, not an inward turn, he's just sitting into it. It's more, more linear, but in a diagonal fashion. It's not back towards the catcher, but it's kind of more behind in line with the hitter's back butt, butt cheek. Here it is again, Anthony Rendon, swing analysis. You can see the getting shorter, staying shorter. He starts at the top. He gets out to that stride, that 60-40 weight distribution. You can see this back toe turns slightly in. You can see him sit or sink into that back hip pocket. It's like he's sitting down. One side of his butt cheek is sitting down. You're going to see him move as he's getting close to the turn. You're going to see him move under the bottom line, and he's going to stay shorter and stay under the bottom line. What's also interesting to note here is this pitch is in and up, in or up and or. And you're going to see the barrel path. He's not snapping it backwards like you see a lot of coaches doing and teaching. It's okay to snap it backwards when we're talking pitches middle away or middle down. What he's doing is he's imagining that there's a catcher's glove set up at his belly button. And he is knocking that catcher's glove off in order to get to this pitch, which is middle in or and or middle up at a higher speed. This is how we catch up or how the best hitters catch up to pitches depth wise that are closer to their eyes and faster. All right, last swing of Anthony Rendon and in the swing analysis, you can see again, all the principles in conclusion of this video, you're gonna see him maintain his distance between his feet. He's gonna start at the top one. He's going to, before his swing starts, he starts to turn. He's going to drop below the bottom one. By maintaining the distance between his feet, it's going to help him to get shorter and staying shorter. You can take a PVC pipe with your hitters. You can set it at about their, I tend to set it at about their nose level and have them practice getting shorter, staying shorter by using their knees. We also don't want them to skip too far. We tend to like the one to three inch skip and it all depends on how tall the hitter is and how young the hitter is. So we maintain the distance between the feet. We use the knees. You can see Anthony Rendon using his back knee even though the front knee gets straight, which some hitters like Anthony Rizzo, Cody Bellinger, Adrian Beltre, they tend to on pitches down in the zone will keep this front knee bent and won't get it actually to straight but they're also using their knee action to stay shorter, to stay below the bottom line. And how do we do this? How do we train this into our hitters? By taking this back foot, turn it slightly in towards the pitcher to create some hip torque back here. We are going to have the hitter sit or sink into that back hip. They're gonna feel like a bone is sticking out of their back butt cheek. And they're going to ride that feeling up until their stride landing position. It also might help by using shifting foot pressure, getting the hitter to understand that they're going to start on the outside of the back foot, inside of the front foot. And as they approach stride landing at about this point, you're going to shift it to the opposite side of each foot. Outside becomes the inside of the back foot and inside becomes the outside of the front foot. And this is an easy way to practice this they can just do it in their room by just standing sideways like they're hitting grabbing their thumb their top hand thumb and practice shifting back and forth back and forth back and forth again in this video we talked about the hip slide as a stride technique we talked about shifting foot pressure we also discussed the difference between javier baez and anthony rendon and how they inwardly turn the hips pre-stride landing or they don't we talked about the benefits of getting shorter, staying shorter, what to look out for, distance between the feet, minimal to zero skip. Talked about using the PVC pipe and make sure that you're swinging smarter by moving better. And before I let you go, like this video, like our channel, and check this out. The Hitting Performance Lab wants to know, did you know repeatable hitting power does not start in the hips? Have you heard the expressions, load and explode the hips, power comes from the hips? Well, we created a free video revealing the results of a scientific study 
that will show you how we added 48 feet of batted ball distance instantly. And it's not all about the hips. Click here now to get the video while it's still free.